one infamous fear, and this is period drama drama. It's time to delve into the cesspool of mediocrity that is the middle ground on IMDb. Yes, the film's rated around 6.5. They're not good enough to be praised, and they're not bad enough to be vilified, so instead they die an ignoble death in audience memory. So today, let's look at a film which no one in their right mind would remember. Set in the late 1940s with a rating of 6.3, this is A Walk in the Clouds. Straight off the bat, you'll realise this film has Keanu in it. Yes, a period drama starring my favourite bad actor, Keanu Reeves. This is going to be fun! The film starts off with Keanu playing some guy called Paul. He's coming back from the war to find out that his bitch of a girlfriend hasn't even read his letters and all she does is sit around the house in her underwear all day. She asks what he's going to do with his life now that he's back and suggests that he resumes his job as a chocolate salesman. By the end of the film, you'll probably be sniggering whenever you hear the word chocolate, and seeing as the plot seems to have been based off the image on the front of a chocolate box, it's certainly appropriate. So Keanu gets on a train and then gets thrown up on by a random woman. Anyone who is well versed in movie cliches will realise that this woman is pregnant. Keanu then ends up getting on a bus driven by meatloaf and drag, and everyone acts like he's the most putrid smelling man in the world, even though he washed off all the vomit a few minutes after it got on him, and often people don't even have that much of a good sense of smell. However, in the world of movie cliches, it turns out that the puking woman is on the bus with him, and she's being harassed by some random men. Keanu whips out his chivalry and hits them in the face with it, and then all of them get thrown off the bus by Miss Meatloaf for that a buy your leave. Keanu starts walking along a country road that seems to have been coloured with green and yellow highlighters and then surprise surprise he notices Miss Pregnancy sitting in the middle of the road on her suitcases like she's waiting for a truck to come along and run her over. Considering the place seems to be deserted and that anyone coming along in a car would certainly see her far ahead of time, this qualifies as the slowest and lamest suicide attempt in the world. Miss Pregnancy, whose name is actually Victoria Aragon, yes, Aragon, confesses that she slept with her college professor and now she's pregnant and her random Mexican father is going to kill her. So Keanu comes up with the sort of idea that only sounds fantastic in movie cliché land. Why not pretend to be the husband and sneak away after staying with the family for a night, leaving them angry with him instead of her? I'm sure all of you can guess the plot from this point, so I may as well stop. However, I'm not letting you get off that easily. If I had to sit through this sugar-tinted mediocrity fest, then so will you! So Keanu whips out his little suitcase full of chocolates like the world's lamest Willy Wonka and informs her that they'll use the wedding rings on the chocolates to... Wait a minute. There are wedding rings on the chocolates? The chocolates come with wedding rings on them? The Wedding Bon Bon Deluxe. Big seller around June. Keanu takes off two of the chocolate wedding rings and leaves one. But what if someone notices that the wedding ring on one of the chocolates is exactly the same as the wedding rings that they're wearing? Congratulations! You just predicted the future plot points! Gee, I feel really insightful! Except it doesn't go anywhere! Oh. So blah blah blah, Keanu meets the girl's Mexican family, who are for the most part pissed off at him, and then they reenact a 17th century Dutch vanitas painting at the dinner table, except with a few less skulls. The girl's dad is then a massive asshole about Keanu being an orphan. I never knew my parents. Oh. Who brought you up? The fairies? I grew up in a home. My daughter can trace her ancestors back 400 years to some of the finest families in Mexico. And you are telling me she has married a man with no past? A man with no past and no future. When Victoria apologizes later, Keanu says that as an orphan, he dreamed of having any parents, even crap unreasonable ones like that. So then Victoria's mother makes up a wedding bed for them in the same bed that three generations of the family have already had sex in. And this is where we've spent our first wedding nights. My mother, my grandmother, and me. That's not really that bad, considering it's the same bed and not the same bed linen. 
but she emphasises this point as if it's something to be proud of and not a disturbing mental image that's going to haunt the people who are attempting to have sex in it potentially for the first time. The awkwardness is further enhanced by Victoria's mother telling her husband to go and walk in on them. Why? Your mother sent me to wish you good night. Keanu, however, is plagued by flashbacks involving bleeding teddy bears, something which is supposed to be serious instead of, you know, stupid. And because we haven't had enough scenes that are supposed to be serious instead of stupid, the whole family rushes out of their beds to prevent grapes freezing in the frost, something which apparently involves all of them standing around flapping their arms with small kites attached to them. Keanu then takes advantage of this moment to pretend that he's Leonardo DiCaprio in Titanic and to recreate the King of the World scene. Is this supposed to be awesome or romantic? Because it just comes across as the world's lamest performance art, with shameless camera angles framing Victoria's breasts for some reason. Keanu then tries to nick off, like he said he would, but Victoria's grandfather stops him. To appease him, Keanu feeds him more chocolates from the Willy Wanker suitcase. This looks like my granddaughter's, uh... You never noticed that. Oh, I didn't see that coming. The grandfather tells him to stay for the harvest. Commence a stupid grape harvesting race. movie or an advertisement for winery tourism? Well, whatever it is, apparently it turns Keanu on, because in the next scene we see him trying to cover up his raging wine boner. Why are they headbanging in the grapes? Keanu then puts his wine boner to good use by attempting to have sex with Victoria, now that they're all disgusting and sticky with grape juice. However, Victoria seems more interested in having sex with her own bed. Victoria then has a horrible stomach ache. Now, since we're dealing in movie cliches, it would be safe to assume that she's having a miscarriage. But no, this scene will never be mentioned again. Keanu still thinks he can't stay, so he tries to leave again, only to be stopped by the grandfather, who appears to be hitting on him. The secret of everything <laughs> is age. Sit down. No, 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 please. Go on, go on. Give, give me that. Don't pay me. No. No, 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 no. You, I'll miss my bus you again. Make yourself comfortable, please. He proceeds to get Keanu wasted and then attempts to serenade him. <laughs> this isn't a blatant attempt to get into Keanu's grape-infused pants, but rather advice for dating his own granddaughter. I'm not sure which is worse. No, 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 no. You've had enough. Uh... Actually, now I know what's worse. Keanu's singing. Oh. He can't even remember the rest of the words. The next day, they go to a giant party for owners of vineyards. Or maybe it's a parade of national stereotypes. I can't quite tell. <laughs> Victoria's dad announces Keanu and Victoria's wedding. The two then decide it's time to let go of the charade, and Victoria tells her family the truth. Keanu then goes home to try and reconcile with his fiancée, only to find her having sex with a moustache guy. He then goes to stand in the middle of the road. It'd be funny if he got hit by a car. Are you alright? Okay, that didn't happen. Not wanting to resume his career as a chocolate suitcase man, and seeing as all his chocolates have been eaten by the grandpa, Keanu returns to the land of yellow where everything is yellow and life is one long irritating advertisement for wine. You know, I wonder why they never show fields of hops in advertisements for beer. 
or flowing amber waves of grain in advertisements for whiskey, or giant piles of potatoes in advertisements for vodka. It's like only wine gets a stupid idealism of heterosexual couples having picnics on hills instead of, you know, giant steel vats with pressure gauges on the side and chemistry, which is what winemaking is like today. I've been to a lot of wineries. I know. It turns out that the winery is in bad financial shape because it looks like you just drunk all of the wine. Now I'll have nothing to sell. Oh well, we're all fucked. Better set the vineyard on fire then. burns at a ridiculous pace, almost as if it had been doused with accelerant. And now that they're actually all fucked, the family has to forgive Keanu. You see, he and Victoria have now fallen legitimately in love, and they're gonna get married now. And Keanu saves the winery by pulling up some dead grapevine. It's just as well that he's now got an alternate source of income, because the fire must have melted all of his chocolates. Roll credits, happily ever after, Mexican stereotypes, yada yada yada, whatever, who cares anymore? This film is a pathetic excuse for cinema. It's one of the lamest movies I've ever seen. It's apparently a remake of a 1940s film called Four Steps in the Clouds. I've never seen the film, but it's probably a lot less honey drenched and dripping with yellow syrup. And it was all yellow. Wikipedia informs me that at the end of Four Steps in the Clouds, the character slips away and returns to his wife, so there's no romance there. Sounds like an improvement. None of the actors are that bad. It's more that the story is so lame and the treatment of the film so cliched and saccharine that it seems more like a wine commercial than a real movie. <laughs> was trying his best in this movie. I'm not really sure I was thinking about how period appropriate he was. If I wanted to cast someone who'd fought in the Pacific Theatre, I would have chosen someone who looked scruffy, tired and beaten up. Not a pretty Eurasian man wearing a plaid shirt. But all things considered, he isn't too bad. At least he's playing an American, unlike his other woeful forays into period settings. 25th May. Budapest. Left Budapest early this morning. You may think I love you not, but that appear hereafter and aim better at me by that I now will manifest. There's barely anything to indicate that this is a period drama, since it doesn't take advantage of the social conventions or issues at the time, apart from Keanu's brief backstory as a soldier. The clothing looks pretty authentic to me, I'll say that much, and maybe the garish colour scheme in some ways plays tribute to the Technicolor films of the period, but that's putting it kindly. I can't notice any glaring inaccuracies in the technology of the time, but the little suitcase of chocolate seems weird to me. Wouldn't you have brought more than one box if you were selling chocolate door to door? I would have thought that the Aragon family would have had a wine press instead of grape stomping, but maybe they're just traditional. Who knows? Either that or they like the taste of foot. <laughs> Don't waste your time on this piece of crap. If you want to watch a movie about wine, go and watch Sideways or something. And if you want to watch a movie set in the 1940s, then watch any one of these. Well, that was a walk in the clouds. And if you'll excuse me, I better be off. I just really feel like a beer.